Well, hello students. Okay, in uh, I'm going to do two videos on factorizing using common fa using common factors, or more properly, uh, it's known as factorizing using the distributive law. Now, before we do that, we really just need to do a very quick review of factors and highest common factors. So I've got two numbers here, 12 and 8. Factors of 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Factors of 8, 1 times 8, and 2 times 4. And what we're looking for here is the largest number that is common uh, to both the list of factors of 12 and the list of factors of 8. And the biggest number that's a factor of both 12 and 8 is 4 because 4 times 3 is 12, and 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, slightly larger numbers. What's the biggest number that's a factor of both 24 and 40? And we could say, well, it's got to be at least, can't be any bigger than 24. So maybe we could try 20, because 20 is a factor of 40. No, that's no good. Um, what about 10? That's no good. Uh, but we do have 8 times 5 is 40, and 8 times 3 is 24. So it really comes down to just knowing your multiplication facts inside out, and uh, finding the highest common factor of these sorts of numbers isn't too bad. Okay, we can also find the highest common factor of algebraic expressions. So if we look at 8a and 4b, we're looking at the variables a and b, they're not common. Looking at the numbers 8 and 4, the biggest uh, number that's a common factor of 8 and 4 is 4. So the highest common factor of 8a and 4b is 4. Looking at the second question, okay, 7 and 3 don't have any common factors except for 1. We don't normally write that down, but there is a common factor of a. There's an a in 7ab, and there's a factor of a in 3a. There's only a factor of b in this one, not in that one. So the biggest common factor is the variable a. And the last question, here we've got 8 and 6 are the uh, coefficients. The highest common factor of 8 and 6 is 2. Now I've got two factors of y. Think of that as being y times y or yy. This one also has two factors of y. So y squared is common to both. This first term has three factors of z, z times z times z. This one has four factors of z, which includes three factors of z. So each of these terms does have z to the power of 3 as a common factor. In general, you can look at, um, see, you got uh, some powers of z there, some powers of z there. The common factor, highest common factor, is going to be the one with the smaller of the two. That has three uh, factors of z. That one has more than three factors of z. So z to the power of 3 is common. Okay, now we've learned already how to get from what's called the factorized form into the expanded form by multiplying a times b and a times c. And that's called expanding. When you go from the factorized form to the expanded form. What we're gonna learn now is how to go backwards. If you're given the expanded form, how do you turn it back into the factorized form? And uh, that's what we're going to go on to um, shortly. Okay, one last thing we need to practice. I've got 2a multiplied by some expression gives us 4a squared. We've got to find out what the expression is. We'll look at the numbers first. 2 times what gives us 4? The answer is 2. a times what gives us a squared? Hopefully you realize the answer is a. a times a simplifies to a squared. The next one, 6 is my numerical factor or my coefficient times what 
gives me 6. Well, the answer is 1, but I'm not going to write it. A times what gives me A squared? Well, that's A times A. And B times what gives me B squared? And that's B. And as a check, 6 is a factor. A times A gives me A squared. B times B gives me B squared. Okay, moving on to the next one. 5 times what gives me 15? Answer is 3. G squared times what gives me G to the power of 5? We're using index law number 1 to multiply powers at indices. So 2 plus what gives me 5? And the answer is G to the power of 3. And finally, we've got an H with the power of 1. 1 H or H to the power of 1 times what? Gives me H to the power of 3. And of course, the answer is H squared. Quick check, 5 times 3, 15. G squared times G to the power of 3, G to the power of 5. And H to the power of 1 times H squared is H to the power of 3. Okay, the last one. 4 times what gives me 20? Answer is 5. I've got uh, p to the power of 2 times something gives me p to the power of 5. That's going to have to be p to the power of 3. And I've got a factor of q times what gives me a factor of q. Well, that's just a 1, which I won't write. So the answer there is 5p cubed. As a check, 4 times 5 is 20. p squared times p cubed is p to the fifth, adding powers. And q times 1 is q. Okay, let's go ahead and start factorizing. Okay, I need to find the highest common factor of 5x and 20. Well, this doesn't contain an x, so it's going to be just a number. And 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 24 times. So the highest common factor is 5. I like to actually cross these out as I go. And 5 goes into 24 times. Now, what is left behind? I write the brackets and I write the plus sign. 5 times what gives me 5x? Answer is x. 5 times what gives me 20? In fact, I've done it up here. That's 5 times 4. So the factorized form for 5x plus 20 is 5 outside of, in brackets, x plus 4. Quick check, 5 times x is 5x, 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, moving on to the second one. Um, looking at this term, I've got y squared, and here I've got just a single y. So the common factor from those two is just y. Once again, I can write the brackets. Because I have a subtract there, I write a subtract there. Now, I've taken out one factor of y out the front. That leaves me with just one factor of y. And I've taken out that factor of y, leaving just a 1. So it factors to be y outside of y take 1. Let's check that. y times y, y squared, y times 1 is y. And the last one. Okay, this has got the factors of uh, negative 9 and y. Um, I'll call it a subtraction. So that's subtracting 6 times z and a 3. So there's no variables that are common. The only common factor is positive 3, which leaves me with, I go ahead and take out the common factor of 3, leaves me with negative 3y minus 2z and plus 1. Quick check, 3 times negative 3y is negative 9y. 3 times negative 2z is negative 6z. And 3 times 1 is 3. Just before we uh, finish this question off, though, it turns out you could have also taken out a factor of negative 3. So let me go and erase 
what I have over here. Otherwise, it'll look very messy. Okay, if I'm going to take out a factor of negative 3, I'm going to change my subtraction to plus negative. So the alternative way of doing this is to take out a common factor of negative 3. You say negative 3 times what gives me negative 9? And the answer is 3. So that becomes positive 3y plus and negative 3 taken out um, negative 3 times what gives me negative 6. That's going to be positive 2z. And finally, that's going to be taking out a factor of negative 3. That's going to leave negative 1 or subtract 1. Quick check, negative 3 times 3y is negative 9y. Negative 3 times 2z is negative 6z. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is to try those three on your own. Um, so pause the video, um, write them down, factorize them. Once you've finished, restart the video, and you can check your answers. Okay, go ahead. Okay, let's go ahead and quickly factorize these completely. Notice I could take a factor of 2 out of these two terms, but that's not the highest common factor. The biggest number I can take out or the biggest factor I can take out is a 6. Because 6 is a factor of 6 and 6 is a factor of 18. So take out a factor of 6, take out a factor of 6. Now you go 6 times what gives me 6y, the answer is y. 6 times what gives me 18, I've written the answer up there, 3. So 6y plus 18 factorized is 6 outside of y plus 3. Quick check, 6 times y is 6y, 6, 6 times 3 is 18. Okay, in the second question, here I've got two factors of d, and here I've got one factor of d. And there's no uh, numerical factors that are common, so the highest common factor is d. So I'm going to take out one factor of d, take out one factor of d, and what's left behind? Well, I've got a d left there, since d times d is d squared, and all I have left here is subtract 2. Okay, quick check, d times d, d squared, subtract d times 2 is minus 2d. And the last one, I'll just take out a, a factor of, let's see, minus 4w, subtract 10y plus 6. All I can do is take out a common factor of, I'll use positive 2. I could have done a negative 2. Take out a common factor of positive 2. Take out a common factor of positive 2. Take out a common factor of positive 2. And that leaves negative 2w subtract. 5y plus 3. Okay, well, that's the end of the first video. So I'll stop it there. And then uh, video number two, we'll look at some more complicated uh, problems.